In this video, we're going to be talking about what I think is probably the most important element of the series dedicated to these unusual clots that are observed in uh, people due to spike protein, and that is basically treatment. That's one of the more common questions being asked, specifically treatments that, are, that were mentioned by the authors we discussed, whose work, scientific work, we discussed in, in this series. All right, so then, my name is Dr. Mikhail Rashik of Marigenomics. Let's get started, and there's seven of them. Let's see if I remember all seven. That's what I'm worried about. Number one is va non-invasive vagal nerve stimulation. So I thought I'm excited about that one is because basically the author suggests that it might be the reduced activity of this nerve that might be causing the fatigue and this and therefore stimulation of the activity of this nerve might be a, an interesting way to deal with one of the more common symptoms of long COVID. Okay, so that that one is and also interesting for me because it makes me thinking, is there is there a way to do this at home, for example? So I'll have to investigate that to see. I don't know. Number two was improving mitochondrial function. So remember we did a video on this mitochondrias are severely affected by the infection and that has consequences that means not enough energy uh, being produced and as basically and therefore you can improve mitochondrial function the authors provide number of, of uh, lists of um, number of chemicals or treatment options I, I won't mention all of them because they just spouted them out which is great because clearly it means they probably have been scientifically investigated I'll give you the top one the number one they mentioned in that list was coenzyme Q10. And then I'll mention two more just because we did videos on these already. NAC as well as vitamin E. Okay, so check out those videos if you're interested. And basically improving mitochondrial function helps you, helps you in essence make sure that you have proper energy so you can function properly so that fatigue can be reduced as well. And of course another one is um, oxygen use so proper oxygen use uh, number three speaking of which was use of hyperbaric oxygen why is that if, if i understood that information correctly what the authors wanted to achieve there is remember these clots will block access of oxygen to certain tissues and as a consequence they will be deprived of oxygen so then this therapy could be used to enhance the access of oxygen when it's needed and therefore to reduce the damage that lack of oxygen caused by blockage of 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 blood vessels by these clots would attempt to alleviate that okay so now let's see if i remember next one um no this is the one that was super actually interesting so number four in Respiratory muscle training. What does that mean? That's the reason why I was super excited about this one in particular is because that one is something that the authors specifically say easily can be done by, by patients at home. And that's basically doing exercises under reduced oxygen flow. So it's similar to what they mentioned is like muscle strengthening exercises. And in essence it's been shown that it does improve quality of life this type of type of activity for uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease patients which is a serious condition which means hey if the, there is benefits to this we should probably be looking at this potentially to alleviate some of the long COVID symptoms as well and the cool thing is as the authors were mentioning is that basically anyone uh, could be doing this at home provided you know what you're doing. <laughs> All right, number six is chelating, uh, chelating iron. What does that mean? So basically, as we're damaging cells in our body by the virus, the cells will release iron into the circulation, basically in, outside the cells, and that can start producing inflammatory state. It's one of the issues. Strong winds, I apologize. <laughs> but I'm on top of the mountain. <laughs> and, and that can start causing issues which might compound other problems already. So perhaps just using iron chelators, meaning chemicals which are used as drugs that will capture iron and just simply prevent it from doing, doing its um, harmful activity when there is basically too much of it. So that's, that's something they even mentioned that could be used with 
conjunction with their number one choice of therapy, which I'm going to go next, which was what they referred to as triple anticoagulant therapy, which is what they think should we potentially should be investigating thoroughly in, on, in clinical trials. And what they mentioned by that is, I believe this was double antiplatelet uh, medications with one anticoagulation medication, but they said this should be also done with the use of proton pump inhibitors and the reason why is to prevent gastric bleeding and hence they also said look this type of therapy should be done under very strict medical supervision and the reason why is because of the danger to bleeding with such a powerful anticoagulant therapy right obviously if you're using anticoagulation therapy you're preventing clotting and therefore you're preventing the ability to stop the bleeding to, to a degree especially in certain predisposed individuals. So this needs to be done under strict medical supervision. And the last one, based on the series that I've been discussing, was this monoclonal antibody that was specifically binding to fibrin molecules and preventing, preventing their formation of these abnormal amyloid clots, clots. I believe the name of that antibody was 5b8 this is not clinically available this is simply what was what it was discovered uh, in in research and we probably should be <laughs> investigating this uh, to determine whether this could be potentially good for therapy All right so this really concludes our super long series on how spike protein could be potentially contributing to the formation of very unusual and potentially obviously dangerous clots. We went through coagulation pathway. We talked about spike protein, how it is directly involved in potentially forming these clots. We talked about how else it could be indirectly involved. We talked about how you could be measuring this and this final episode is how you could be treating. That's all I have for you for now. We're gonna wrap it up here and I just wanted to say thank you for all your support. Thank you for all the support of the growth of the Patreon channel as well. By the way, check out other videos that we talked about. Autops, we will have a video dedicated to autopsies and deaths. So check that out. And, and um, I look forward to seeing you in another installment. Bye, everyone.